Hey guys, welcome back to Control Z Crypto. So yesterday I uh, put out a video talking about uh, all of the ROI dApps on Matic and where I saw them uh, going to, kind of putting some predictions out there on how how long they would last and whether or not they were they were going to be good investments. And I got some pretty interesting comments, so I wanted to uh, talk about those today and just have another look at, uh, in particular, Multimatic. Um, so, look, in, in yesterday's video, I, I tried to do a kind of, um, basically cover a lot of dApps in one video, which I don't think I'll do again, because from that experience, I felt like I was just trying to rush through it give as much information in, in as little time as possible and not really, couldn't really go into the, the level of detail that I wanted and, and to talk about it in, in kind of, um, you know, a really, at a, at a deep level that would, would um, give you a little bit more information, a little bit more along the lines of what, what I'm thinking and how I'm working through this process. So uh, today I want to spend time really just looking at, at um, Multimatic pretty much um, by itself because the comments were pretty interesting and, and um, I've spent some time kind of looking at my model, revising my model, uh, and I want to take you through that in some detail. So first, just to, just to have a look at some of the comments um, on my last videos. So I've, I've just kind of concealed the names of the people. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do, but just uh, for YouTube, I, I just don't want to call anyone out or, or make anyone feel uncomfortable. But um, uh, so thank you anyway for commenting and, and providing feedback. So the first commenter says, how are you determining the pro projected end date of a project? Um, so hopefully by the end of this video, we'll, we'll go through Multimatic and hopefully by the end of the video, you've got a good understanding and, and maybe some level of comfort with where, where these um, figures are coming from. You know, it's it's based on how the dApps are working, based on how the, the contract set up and um, hopefully you'll see that by the end of this video. Next commenter says, a quick question regarding Matic Vault. What investment maximizing profit strategy do you intend to use? Well, I'll, I'll look at this quickly because it's a, a quick question, really. If we, we take a look at Matic Vault, this is basically a stable one clone. And in terms of strategy, I don't think there's there's really much you can uh, you can do here. It, it's I would um, essentially basically put a certain amount, well, assuming that you're comfortable with with um, investing in, in Matic Vault, um, all you can really do is withdraw every day. Um, so basically put, put your money in and um, every day take the money out. Uh, I, I don't think there's much of a strategy you can do. I actually really like Stable One and um, uh, clones of Stable One. So Stable One, as of I think last night, my time has actually ended, like it's run out of contract balance, which was you know, expected. You can watch my previous video on, on that if you want some more context for that. Um, but in terms of how these are structured, I like them for their simplicity. You can, and, and for the risk mitigation, you can, you can pretty much get, um, uh, you know, if you, if you can get money out every day, you're not exposing yourself to as much risk because if you don't, um, survive to, to get a profit, then hopefully you make back, you know, 70, 80, 90% of your investment. So I actually like this. Um, if if this kind of starts up and gets some some good uptake, I'll probably invest in in Matic Vault and just do that. Basically, put an amount in, take a amount out every day. There's not too much more to say on that in terms of strategy. Just get in early, and take profits daily. All right. So these other comments. Um, the third one here. Hey buddy, I think you're wrong about multi Matic as you didn't say what they have coming down the pipe and have you even talked to the team or the community if not maybe you should want there are there sorry if not maybe you should they want their product to last just like baked beans anyway please talk to the team they are more than welcome and very transparent uh so i did talk about this a little bit in a in a previous video um and i'll i'll just kind of touch on it again um i don't i don't put much stake in communities in in devs not that um, I don't think that the, potentially the team behind Multimatic is doing good work. I I really don't know. I just I, I I don't think that that's that's not the way that I invest. Let's put it that way. That's not the way that I look at crypto. Um, I think crypto is good. Uh, the, the 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 benefit of crypto, one of its strengths, 
is the fact that it is trustless and decentralized. Uh, the fact that, that once a contract goes on to the blockchain and is, is live, it's immutable, it can't be changed, it's all there. You can, you can um, you know, query that blockchain, you can look at it, uh, you can look at the contract and you can work out what your risk is based on that. So definitely there are things that the community could be plan. sorry, the devs could be planning, they could be building a community, they could be building into something um, bigger. They could be trying to get away from uh, this kind of um, uh, Ponzi scheme. But in my experience, the, these projects tend to just come and go. They, they tend to start, they burn out. Some people make a profit, some people um, lose their money. And then that's it. Everyone moves on. There's another, um, there's another ROI DAP that comes on. I, I just don't put much stake. I don't, I don't want to put my hopes and dreams into a app that at its core, remember, is a Ponzi scheme with a pyramid scheme wrapped around it. So the Ponzi scheme is how it pays out. The pyramid scheme is the referral uh, plan. And I, whether or not they are doing greater things, I, I think is beside the point. I'm not going to base my investment decisions around promises uh, that, that um, may or may not be delivered. I'm going to base my decision on, on what's on the contract and what is actual reality. Uh, so Matic Staker is a, an example of that. Matic Staker, uh, basically, they have promises of a Trix token. It's coming in a couple of days. You just don't know. what is it going to come? Is it going to be good? I don't know. That's That's not... That's not something I want to base my investment on, is just promises and talk and what may or may not happen. Um, I think that's a, I think it's a good way to get burned if, if really, if you if you uh, want to trust devs, if you want to trust uh, that people are going to do the right thing. I think that's that's obviously up to you. It's your decision, but I, I don't I, I don't trust anyone. Especially given where we are and what and the kind of dApps we're looking at, we're looking at really what I would call get rich quick dApps. They're easy to fork. They're easy to put out there for the devs to just say, "Hey, I've got a great app," and and make a million promises. Um, I, I don't think it's it's a, a good strategy to to really believe those promises. I, I'm, I'm my own strategy and the, the, what I'm doing on this channel is just to look at the numbers and to see. Um, whether or not I think that the risk uh, justifies the um, the reward there. Uh, so I might just zoom in a very, very lightly here. I realize that it's probably a bit small to see. Okay, so that's a uh, response to that comment. So now these next two I'm going to talk about in a little bit more detail um, as I go through the Matic Staker uh, app in, in detail here. But I'm going to cover off some of the the points and then maybe come back to them. So this next one says, you may want to reanalyze Multimatic. The various plans have an escalating withdrawal tax, 10, 15, 20%, that isn't accounted for in your model and should, may promote longevity. Okay, so this is an interesting one because, uh, and again, we will get into the, the numbers and try to break down how this, this wall works out. But if you have a withdrawal tax, um, I'll start by saying, look, looking at the, the contract itself and at the audit, it's actually difficult to work out if the withdrawal tax is going back into the contract. So I haven't been able to, to confirm that that withdrawal tax is going back in the in the contract. It's just kind of called out as a tax and the tax may go back into the contract. It may go to devs, like in my mind. So I'd want to see something saying, yeah, it's going back into the contract. The only place that I've seen that it says it's going back into the contract is actually in um, the Multimatic uh documentation, what they say. They're saying, yes, it's going back into the contract. So I've got no way of validating that and verifying that that's true. Um, I, I, but, but you know, pretty much it doesn't make a huge difference to me. So I'm going to make the assumption that it is going back into the contract. So let's think about what that withdrawal tax is going to realistically do um, because it's not a major um, issue for me. I, I just don't see it as being a huge um something that's really going to increase the the, the contract that much. <clears throat> and, I'll, and I'll give you a way to think about it. So I'll, I'll just stick a cal uh, calculator up on the screen. So say you've got a, um, a, a interest rate of 10%. So your return is 10% um, daily. Um, 
and you have a withdrawal tax of 10%. So 10% seems high, like, oh, withdrawal tax of 10%, there's going to be a lot that comes out. But really, what that means, what is a, with, what is a withdrawal tax? It's, you can think of it as, because basically that money is coming off your withdrawal and going back onto the contract. It's, it's really the same as just never having taken it out of the contract. So if, you're, if they're taking 10% of your withdrawal, putting it back on the contract, it's the same as effectively lowering your return from 10% to 90% of 10%, which is 9%, right? So I hope that makes sense. All this, all this 10%, um, uh, 10% withdrawal tax is doing is lowering the the returns by about 10%. So if, so if the interest rate was 10%, the return rate was 10%, you'd be getting 9% instead. So it's it, it does do something. It it effectively lowers the return rate, which is which is important and does increase um, the lifespan of the contract, but it is not massive. It's 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 one it's you know 1% basically for 10%. It's actually lower for Multimatic because their their returns are lower than 10%. And if it's 20%, you know, maybe it's one point something percent, but it's 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 very marginal. That they might as well just lower the interest rate. So so in my mind, having this whole mechanism of a withdrawal tax with numbers that look high, 10, 15, 20%, when all you're doing is really just reducing the the payout, that's not in my mind that that's more a marketing thing in my mind. That's more more spin. You're saying, hey, we're putting these measures in place. We've got a withdrawal tax. All you're doing is just slightly reducing the return, slightly reducing the payout. So that's why I don't put much stake into it. All right. So next next comment here. Uh, and I also also say, yes, I, I do account for that in my model. And, and in my update, I'll show you how, how that's accounted for. So, hey, bud, a great video with regards with, with Multimatic. You missed a lot of important factors. So let's take a look at that. They have a snooze function, which encourages people to keep their investment in the contract longer for extra ROI during this time, they're free to withdraw when they like, but only gain the extra percentage whilst they remain snoozed, no extra tax charges. So this is this is interesting because um, when I was looking at one of these uh, yesterday, I think it was Polystaker that I was looking at where there is a, there is a essentially a, um, uh, was it Polystaker? I can't remember. I've had a look at so many uh, of these um, of these apps where there is a, uh, yes, it was, sorry, where there's a hold bonus. And that hold bonus seems to have the effect that the people aren't withdrawing. In fact, I'm not withdrawing. You can see I've got, I've got um, uh, five Matic here, which is more than half of my initial, just sitting there getting the hold bonus. And, and the reason that is, is because I'm looking at the contract balance and saying, well, it's actually not on their page, but I'm, I'm looking at it and saying, well, there's enough, there's enough in the contract for me to, um, to actually uh, not worry about losing my money. Um, I've also done the modeling. So I'm, so I'm looking at, at where I see um, Poly Staker ending up and we'll just have a quick look at this. This is, hasn't been updated but in any, any way today. But if I'm looking at this and going, well, the contract balance is um, gonna hold till about the 16th of March, that's still a few days. Well, I'm gonna just hold it. And when, when I think that um, I've got some risk there, then I'll start pulling my money out. But the interesting thing about these snooze functions is, well, the, there, there's kind of a game theory uh, piece that sits on top of it. And so if you imagine the way that this plays out, where you've got your total contract balance um, supposed to be at, at zero, essentially, because the amount of um, the amount of money owed by the contract is larger than the amount of money that that is in the contract. So let's have a look at, 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 um, at a polystake for an example. Um, so on the 18th of March by this model, say, okay, we've, we are past the stage where the amount um, of money in the contract is enough to pay the total amount of eligible withdrawals there are. So if everyone was to instantly withdraw, withdraw everything that they were own, owed, um, the contract would just run out of money instantly. So, from a game theory perspective, it seems to me like a snooze function would, um, you know, it wouldn't be that effective because at this point, the 18th of March, you've got a, a contract balance that is essentially kind of undermined. 
um, by the fact that the, the withdrawals, withdrawals pending are larger than it can sustain. And it's almost like a game of musical chairs. Like if, if people, if everyone agrees to sit on, on um, their balance and, and keep snoozing and not um, basically taking their money out, then yeah, the, the, the contract balance will be sustained for longer. But as soon as people start thinking about it, as soon as people start thinking, well, I, if I don't take my money out, uh, I might, you know, maybe I'm getting that extra 1% or whatever it is a day, but the contract balance could reduce to zero very quickly. And the longer that, that gets snoozed, the higher that risk is because, you know, that gap between how much is available in the contract and how much is owed is just going to get bigger and bigger. And you need fewer people really to cash out to, to bring it to zero. So from a game theory perspective, um, it doesn't make sense to me that that is actually sustainable because once you see that contract balance start to drop, more people are going to assess their risk and, and take their money out. They're going to say, well, you know, I can hang on for another day and get another percent or I can pull it out today and get it all. So, you know, I could, I could, it's a risk versus benefit and I think just seeing the way people have um, reacted uh, on these um, dApps in the past, I mean, what was the one that collapsed a few days ago just because um, people worked out you could do a, an instant uh, withdrawal and take out 80% of your money and people did that and collapsed it. Just, I think people uh, understand the risk and from a, a game theory perspective, you're not going to get a situation where everyone is, is taking like this is the this is the prisoner's dilemma basically um, uh, in a in a smart contract because if everyone does the optimal thing say in theory take takes this the optimal thing and just keeps hitting that snooze button extending the contract as much as possible with the the view that they will be the one who wins by by getting out slightly earlier than everyone um, it's just not it's just not going to work because as soon as people start to pull out money. The whole thing will come crashing down. Everyone's going to want to get out. Um, so, so I think, based on that, look, this this is my speculation, but based on how I understand this to be working, um, I think as soon as we start getting to this theoretical um, end of the end of the the cycles, so 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 where the amount in the contract balance is not enough to cover all of the um, uh, all of the withdrawals that could happen at any any time. Um, then you're going to actually, maybe the snooze will extend it by a day or two or, or something along those lines. But as soon as people start realizing what's going on, as soon as they start hitting that withdraw button, the contract balance is going to drop pretty quickly. And, and um, some of the people who snoozed are going to, are going to lose their money. They, they should have taken it out. That's basically how it works. You're, you're, you're kind of gambling uh, at that point with a, um, with, a, with a contract balance that cannot sustain you. So you're taking a huge risk. It's going to be a game of musical chairs, um, and I think as soon as that balance starts to drop, people will notice and just take their money out. So that's why I don't put much stake in that snooze function, and hopefully that makes sense. But look, we'll see how it pans out in reality. Maybe in reality, people are willing just to extend the, their um, um, their risk, but I just don't see it happening. All right, the point, second point covered here, the taxes applied to each plan aren't covered. There is a 10% tax on the 14-day plan. Yep, so I've, I've talked about that. Um, and essentially, as I've said, that that is a, a effective lowering of the, um, the return rate and nothing more than that. So this next one, lottery function, this was made by the devs for the community. They take no cut for this, right? Uh, again, this this is kind of falls under the under the external factors that I spoke about in the in the previous comment. Um, so basically, um, there are external factors that that I'm not considering. Things like the um, the community, the the long term plans of the devs, lottery functions. Um, it's the next one here in development functions such as rebase tokens. We just don't know. We don't know what these are. Well, you, this is, for, in my mind, this comes under the category of promises and maybes. So lottery function, maybe. Maybe that does something. Maybe it doesn't. My view probably won't. Um, your analysis does not. So rebase tokens, ETA and tokenomics, TBA. I place zero confidence in this. I have to say, like, absolutely zero. 
tokens get created every day. There are tens of thousands of tokens on, on change, chains. 99.99% of them are just garbage. They don't do anything. Anyone can create a token. You can say it's great, got great tokenomics. It's, um, it's deflationary. It's always going to go up. And it doesn't because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any utility. It doesn't have any, any reason um, to own it apart from really just selling it and trying to make some money out of it. And, and you, you have all of these, um, these tokens, those, these farming tokens that, um, that kind of prove this. So for, if you've ever gotten into a liquidity farming and, and um, yield farming, and then you, you get paid in these farm tokens, they try all sorts of incentives to keep these prices sustainable. You can, um, you can stake them, you can, you can, participate in other ways you can reinvest them to kind of keep the price high and make make it so you don't sell it but despite all of those measures they just go down they just plummet in value over time because people want to sell them they want to make short term money and that's that's just basically how it is so in all of those equations the people who sell them in the short term make the money the people who buy them are the bag holders and they lose money i just don't understand how any token that comes out of this basically provides anything that is different to just that standard um, farm token tokenomics. You you sell it, um, you lose money, you know, there might be some kind of returns, maybe there's some sustain, but you, you, the community or the, the number of users, I should say, that that will build around this is so low, there's just nothing there. Like, I, I just don't understand it. I, I'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong. I'm happy for them to come out with a with a rebase token, uh, with NFTs and whatever other promises that they have. Great. If it works, fantastic. I'm wrong. But this to me seems like such a huge long shot given given the experience of every single other token, every single other uh, NFT in the space. The, it just doesn't make sense how this one would offer anything of value. Okay. So that's that's all I say on that. Just don't believe promises. Look at the contract. Look at what you're actually getting into. So the last point here, you haven't accounted for new investors coming in. Yes, it's ROI currently and relies on new investment heavily, but the team over at Multimatic Multi-Network are working hard to remove most of the Ponzi-nomics and try to create a whole ecosystem that is probably the safest ROI in the space. Look, I, I would say it probably is among the safest ROIs just but on the basis of how it works. Um, it's It's actually not it's not too bad. It doesn't have extreme interest rates that, that keep rising. Um, but I don't see how you get away from the, from the Ponzi, uh, Ponzinomics. It, it is a Ponzi scheme. Like the contract that you're putting money in, the contract that you invest in, the Multimatic contract is a Ponzi scheme and the contract is immutable. You can't change it. So that contract is a Ponzi scheme. You put money in, it's predictable. You get money out at a certain rate. They can't change. The devs can't change that. That's locked in. That is the contract. Everything else around here, well, they, they're working on, they can't remove the Ponzi-nomics out of, out of the contract because that's immutable. But, you know, the, the, this whole creating the ecosystem and the safest ROI sp um, in the space, the, the, the whole ecosystem and, and everything, that comes under the category of promises, hopes and dreams, future, future things that they're working on. And if they come to fruition, I'll take a look. And if it's worthwhile, I'll invest. But until it exists, I'm not going to put money into something on the basis of community and um, and promises. So this is why I don't put, I put almost zero stake when people say things like, um, look at the community, look at the team. Zero stake, because those things do not exist. These future promises do not exist. When they exist, that is the time to look at them as an opportunity and say, well, okay, do I want to get into this now? The time to, to kind of look at that is not um, not now when they don't exist. And they have no bearing on the current Multimatic um, contract. So again, this is the, the current Multimatic contract does not change. What is in that smart contract does not change. This investment, whatever it is, whatever you make of it, is what it is today. Um, and tomorrow, this will, or no, at some time in the near future, this is going to run its course and maybe the Multimatic guys come out with something else. So that something else can be something that you look at when it comes out. That's not something that you kind of, you invest in Multimatic um, today 
on the basis that sometime in the future they're going to do something else because that has nothing to do with this contract. This contract is what it is today and you need to um, make a decision on whether or not it's a good investment based on today. Um, so look, this is this is all my opinion, of course. I, I should say I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Standard disclaimer. This is all my opinion. This is, this is how I view uh, investing and this is the approach that I take that, that I'm sharing with you. Okay, so um, hopefully that rant, uh, semi-rant has, has been informative. I'm going to uh, switch now to looking at Multimatic in, in detail and taking in some of these this feedback and um, showing you basically where I'm getting my information, how I'm breaking down uh, the, the life cycle of this particular project um, and basically what my predictions are based on that uh, and where I think that the model has uh, is, is good and where I think that, that you know there are things that I can't predict. So let's start with Multimatic and just understanding what it is. Um, so there are three plans. You've got a 14-day, 21-day, and a 28-day plan. Um, so there's, there's a, a kind of a, a feature here where you have a return and a reinvest. Um, in, for the basis of my calculations here, I'm only looking at this total return. So you can, uh, I'll get the calculator out and we can just do a quick look at uh, this now. So basically you have, you can imagine if you invest 100 Matic, uh, basically at that 157.9% uh, rate, you get 157.9 uh, Matic. And then there's a withdrawal tax. So of 10%, so we multiply this by 0.9 and you're left with 142.11. So that's what this is. You deposit 100 Matic, you receive 142.11 under the 14 day plan. So there are other plans, a 21 day plan and a 28 day plan. And this is where the complexity in trying to model something like Multimatic comes in. Because when you look at the, at the block chain, if you go on, um, uh, where is it? If you go on Polygon Scan, you look at these um, transactions. You can actually, um, I think this is, is this, is this the right one? This is Multimatic. Let me just double check before I kind of get deep into it. I might just reopen the, the contract from here. Make sure I'm looking at the right one. Uh, yeah, Sorry, just the number of transactions seem very low to me. So this is um, this is the, the Polygon Scan contract. You can look at the transactions. Uh, what I've done for my analysis is, is done a CSV export and then basically taken the actual values that come out of these deposits and, and um, put them into the, the spreadsheet and into the model. What you can get out of this, really just the way that the contract is set up and the information you can get out of Polyscan, you can work out what investments have been made. And that's really the basis of my calculations. You can work out how much people have put into this thing. What is difficult to work out based on the information you can get out of Polygon Scan is which contract they've put it into. So, um, and also how much they've withdrawn. Um, so I'm pretty much just looking at um, investments, new investments every day. Uh, and everything else is guesswork to some extent. Uh, but I've made some assumptions and I think that's all I can do. So again, the, the model I come up with is never going to be an exact model because it contains assumptions, but it's going to have some bearing on um, you know, some simil similarity to reality. So one of the assumptions I have to make is that most people are going to go into this 14-day contract. I know a lot of people are going to go into the 28 days and the 21 days. In fact, I've called out, I'm in the 28-day one because I, I aped in before I started actually looking at this stuff in detail. Um, but I know, you know a lot of people are going to do the same thing, even though it doesn't make sense from a risk perspective to do anything apart from the 14 days. But the reason I use that 14 days as the calculation basis and not the others is because I have to ch I have to come up with the worst case scenario from the perspective of risk and the worst case scenario is everyone uh, is rational and everyone takes the the um, the option that results in the lowest risk and um, and I and so if I'm taking the risk ass assessment I want to know that if I'm investing in uh, in Multimatic what is the basically the risk if um, in the worst case scenario, if everyone invests correctly, if everyone had invested instead of in Helium, in Dolphin Club, 
and put it in for 28 days, the model goes out the window. Like it, 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 it will hold for much longer. I just don't think that people, um, especially as they become more and more savvy with these ROI apps, I don't think that most people will do 28 days or 21 days, but but definitely keep that in mind if you look at the model and you think that it's too aggressive, that the that Multimatic is going to last longer. This is one of the reasons why why it could, is is if um, a lot of people go into the 21 or 21, 28 day plan. But from the model, I'm only looking at the 14 day plan because that's the that's my risk assessment. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, I think I think in reality, if I try to imagine what the contract looks like and what people have gone into, I would say that definitely more than, you know, 60% will have gone in the 14 days. It just makes much more sense to do it that way um, than, than if they went into the 28 days. Um, and, and just from a purely, you know, I guess economics perspective, seven, look, the, the contract, no matter how sustainable it is, cannot pay this, amount. Imagine after 28 days, you 7x your money. That means you need seven times as many people to put in a thousand into the contract for you to get that out. For me, this Dolphin Club and the way it's set up is almost a hard limit on how long Multimatic can last. Just on the basis that you're paying people seven times what they put in, uh, you know, seven and a half times what they put in. Even the 28, 28 days, you're paying people three and a half times. You need more than three new people to come in just to pay back that investment over the 21 days. It's an it's a absolute sign that, that this thing is not sustainable. So in my mind, you're, you're kind of looking at the 14-day period. You're looking at, at this um, 1.4. You basically needed half a person to come on to pay back uh, that amount, just you know ballpark figures. This is kind of sustainable for a little bit. But once you start getting into these 21 days, 28 days, it signals to me, again, all my, my own analysis, that this is not going to last. It can't last because you cannot pay people seven times the amount that they put in in 28 days and expect the, the, the contract to last. So, you know, once again, I don't believe in hopes and dreams. I don't believe in what is coming um, in the future. Uh, I believe in what's here now. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, this cannot be paid out. You cannot pay back people in 28 days, seven times, seven and a half times what they put in. This is not sustainable. Um, it, it, this is a Ponzi-based ROI app. All The only value that it's coming into it is what people put in. So for me, this is a hard limit to, to how long um, things can, can last. All right. So that's the basic uh, look at the page. What else have we got? What other information can we get? So there's a snooze feature. We've talked about it. I just don't believe in that snooze feature. We may get something out of it. Um, I just don't know. I can't imagine that people are going to be snoozing when the contract balance is going down or when they know that the contract balance is is empty. Maybe they don't know that, that you know, a, a lot of people are not going to know. They'll look at, at this in this de level of detail. They're not going to know what the contract balance should be. They're not going to know how this works. You know, when you're investing here, you're basically assuming that a lot of people don't know what they're doing, which is fair. Maybe that that um, adds one, two days to the contract. Maybe it adds three days. I don't know, but it's people are talking as if this stuff is sustainable because of snooze functions, because of um, you know withdrawal taxes. But none of this stuff makes any any fundamental difference to the fact that these are Ponzi schemes and they have a, a pretty clear way of operating. All right. So what else can we get here? There's a withdrawal tax of 10% and as or 15% or 20%. In my calculations, I've got this 10% just because again, I'm only looking at the 14 days. This might change things a little bit. I, I don't think it will, but you know, make of that what, what you will. Um, what else have we got? So let's look at the security audit. Um, the security audit is showing one high issue and you'll see that on every single ROI DAP and that's actually how you can identify an ROI DAP. It's basically saying this is a Ponzi scheme. Um, users get dividends from other deposits of other users. So you put money in, everyone puts money in, you get paid off the money that's in. Eventually the money runs out and, and people who invested after a certain day lose their money. Um, but this is this is important. You know, there is no there are no backdoors, no scam scripts, because what you need to differentiate in terms of risk 
is separating the ROI risk, which I think is, is manageable, understandable, and quantifiable. You need to separate that from the risk of an actual rug pull. So, so what this is saying is they're not going to rug. They can't, they can't just basically take the money out of the contract and walk away. So this is great. And this is for me, when I'm looking at one of these uh, audits, this is what I want to see. I want to see an ROI risk and I want to see no other, no other kind of backdoors and other risks. Um, okay, so all of this stuff is is pretty much what we've talked about. Um, it, it's it, just outlining how the contract works. The the total returns are the same as they are on the uh, website, so that's a a, a good um, uh, vote of confidence there. The only thing that I will mention here is that this tax it doesn't say anywhere in this audit report again that this tax goes back onto the contract. It only says that there is a tax and. In my interpretation of what a tax is, um, my worry is that that could also just go back into um, the hands of the the devs as a as a fee. Um, you know, I, I'm not. I'm assuming here that it's going back into the contract. That's what people are telling me. That's what it says in the in the other documentation. I'm prepared to take that as an, as, as an assumption, just because it doesn't make much of a difference anyway. Ten percent of seven percent is basically takes this down to six point three percent. It's it's not. It's something. It's not as huge as people are making it out to be. Um, what I will call out here is this project fee, because this is very important. What is a project fee? Um, now you think you have to think about how the Multimatic devs make money because what they're here to do is, is make money. Obviously now they're not making money on the withdrawal tax if that's going back into the contract. So what they charge is a project fee and the way that project fee work is works is basically a fee on your deposits. And you don't see that fee anywhere when you look at the Matic page. You say, here, I've invested um, 20 Matic and it's showing I've got my 20 Matic and this is how much I'm going to receive on, on which date. But where this comes out, where this 10% comes out is on the contract balance. So say I was to invest, um, let's say 100 Matic. I'll bring the calculator up. Say I'm going to invest 100 Matic uh, and they want to take 10% of it. That means that 90% of that 100 Matic is what hits the contract balance. So already uh, the contract balance is down 10%, which is actually pretty huge. And this is much more of an impact than the 10% going back on from with withdrawal. So, um, you know, let's maybe do some, some quick calculations. Say I'm, I'm depositing $100, um, $90 is hitting the... Um, the balance, the contract balance. Then when I go to withdrawal, I receive 142 Matic. So basically 142.11 minus 90, that's 52, that's 52 Matic. So that's basically the balance of, of what is owed and that's got to come from somewhere else. Um, and um, what they're saying is they're reinvesting essentially 10% uh, of the, so they're reinvesting the difference between these two numbers. So 157.9 minus 142.11. So they're reinvesting $15. So look, there, there is some reinvestment being made, but it's not, it's not sustainable. It's, it's, it's kind of peanuts as far as I'm concerned um, in the whole scheme of things. All right. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much all that's in the, in here. So I've got snooze function. We've got the referral system um, and that's basically it. So, I would really like to see more information in these Hayes contract audits. And some of them I've seen are really good. Some of them show really breakdown kind of fees, where they go to and that kind of thing. This one's pretty pretty high level um, as far as I'm concerned. And I've had a look at the contract itself, the, the smart contract in Polygon Scan. Um, this is quite hard to read and I do have some, some coding and IT background um, but this is for me kind of hard to work out. If, if I try to work out from this, let's look at the word tax and try to work out where the tax goes and how it's actually handled. It's quite difficult for me to, to pass. Um, and you know, maybe with a, with a several hours of investigation, I'd get there, but I haven't been able to just, just looking at the contract. So it's, it's difficult to actually get this information out of the, the contract code. Um, so I wanted to also have a look at the Multimatic document because um, this is their white paper. This is how they say it works and what information we can get out of this. 
Um, I put close to zero stake in this. I put much more in, in the security audit. I put much more in what's on the contract, what's on the blockchain. But, you know, let's have a look at it. They say it's easy to use, safe to invest in. I mean, look, in my opinion, it's not safe to invest in. This is a ridiculous claim. To say that it's sustainable is also a ridiculous claim. Um, I could be proven wrong, but this is my opinion. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's sustainable for a short term. You're going to get money out if you invest at the right time. But to say that it's safe to invest in, that it's sustainable, in my opinion, is just not correct. So um, th that's why I don't put any any stake into what they're saying. This is their marketing spin. This is their own opinion of their own contract. And remember, the more people that invest, they get 10% of everything that is, is, is put onto this contract. So they're incentivized, of course, to get as much as they can, as many investments as they can. And... Look, I don't know who these guys are. I don't know what their reputations are. But look, at this stage, there's 1.6 million Matic staked. They get um, 160,000 out of this. That's their, that's their return on investment. That comes out to, I don't know, roughly 250, 200, 250,000 uh, US dollars. That's not bad for however long this contract is going to run, a few weeks. That's, that's a pretty good return. So that's why people do it. You know, you run it for a few weeks, you make a few hundred thousand. If it's really popular, you might make a few million. I think the the um, Matic Staker was a, a much bigger cash cow. And then you move on, um, do something else. So uh, what else can we get out of here? So look, security, uh, it's been audited, key features. We've talked about most of these and then it's just a description. They do say that the, the tax gets back into the contract balance. So fine, let's, um, let's proceed on that basis. And then it's just instructions really on how to use it and, and then promises what's coming next. Again, I don't care. That's what is here now is what I'm basing my investment decision on. I'm basing it on what I'm looking at, not what the promises are. Um, so with all that being said, let's now take a look at the model that I've put together for um, Multimatic. And you can see I've got Multimatic revised here. Because I've taken some time to really tweak the um, uh, the model. And the reason is, in the first cut, I talked about this ROI model as a kind of ideal scenario of how your, your flat deposits over time increase the cumulative invested while uh, giving us this curve for the, um, the actual contract balance. And, and with that, you can predict the end of the contract to some degree of uh, accuracy that is not clear at this at the moment and when we looked at some of the of the daps let's take a look at say stable one which is now finished that um that ended on the 13th so my model predicted kind of a little bit longer because it was making some assumptions about daily investments you know if that model if that goes down um then definitely the date comes in so that that all of that is a factor but all of these are based on uh a daily withdrawal and i think that's the that's the the key um, piece that was missing when you look at at, um, at apps like Multimatic where you have uh, a lock-in period. Um, I was putting all sorts of assumptions in and, and figures to try and try and tweak the model to account for the lock-in period. Um, and that the result was that it's not accurate. And my, my, my intention here was never to be 100% accurate. My intention here was to try and create some sort of model that put me close to the end date to help make a risk assessment of the contract. Um, but with that being said, I recognize that, for, you know, from the feedback provided and from looking at this in a bit more detail, that um, the model could use a tweak. So basically for uh, these lock-in contract, um, smart contracts where you need to stake for a minimum lock-in period, I've essentially just redesigned this model. And what I'm going to show you today is, is how this works and um you know, what my approach has been. And um, hopefully that kind of gives you some assurance into what is happening here. So let's just start. I'm going to take you through all this. And I, I regret not doing this in my last video because I was trying to cover a lot of information in, in a short time. But here we have the opportunity to look at one contract and see uh, what it tells us. So Multimatic is the contract we're looking at. I've got the contract address here. And basically the spreadsheet uses 
uh, an API call to give me what the current balance is. So this live balance is updated every, I uh, believe, 10 minutes. Uh, and it just shows the current contract balance um, that is on the actual block. This daily balance gives me a, a snapshot as of um, midnight UTC. So midnight UTC is about... Uh, one and a half hours ago as the time of this recording. I'm based in Australia, but, um, you know, so it's about an 11 hour difference, but all the calculations are based on UTC because that happens to be what the, um, what uh, Polygon Scan is based off. And so it's just easier to be consistent. So, you know, another caveat to this model is that wherever you live, this is not going to be your local time necessarily. So things are going to be out in terms of timing, but you know, I'm not I'm not trying to nail it on the button here. I'm trying to get close. Uh, so the daily rate increase, this doesn't apply to Multimatic because Multimatic has a static rate and the, and the rate for Multimatic is just basically this investment rate. Um, and for this calculation, I've ditched this daily return because it doesn't actually, because it compounds um, by the looks of it and it's difficult to base a calculation. I'm just going to use this total return uh, 157 and the actual minus um, the deposit fee, which is 142. So that's the way that, that I'm, I'm basing my calculations for this model. You can see that I've got the total withdrawal. Oh, actually, I'll, I won't go to that yet. It's not going up. So the daily rate increase is not going up. For some contracts, um, the daily, so so a multi, sorry, Matic Staker was one of these where it would increase by half a percent a day. So this model lets me increase that by half a percent a day. Um, and see how that takes us. So you can see if I just 0.5% here. And that that um, impacts the model. In fact, it doesn't impact it much. I need to check it because for this, I've only been looking at Multimatic when I'm tweaking it. So I'm, I may not have a daily increase correcting in there. Minimum lock period is really important to this. And that, sh that basically um, is the difference between when you're uh, depositing and when you're actually ab able to withdraw. So the effect that this has on the curve, and we, we can pretty much look at the curve now, I think, um, the graph. So red line, so blue line is is the is the um, the daily deposits. You can see um, I've actually got actuals for this up to the 12th of March, which was up to the midnight point um, an hour and a half ago. Um, and you can see these actuals started low, hit a real peak uh, up 333,000. And lately have been declining. The last couple of days have been only 6,000 and 8,000. So that's really low. That's why I've got 10,000 in, which is probably an optimistic projection, in fact, in my daily new investments. You can see this blue line kind of went up and now is, is dwindling to nothing. And that, that's a pretty bad sign for sustainability. The fact that um, new investments in the contract are pretty low. Uh, the green line is the contract balance over time. You can see similarly as, as people deposit um, that goes up and you can see it keeps going up until a point where the contract is 14 days old or somewhere around here. And that's when people start getting their deposits out and that's why it drops very quickly. Um, the red line is just the, the sum of all deposits. So the sum of all deposits mirroring very closely with the contract balance um, up until that point of divergence where people uh, people's four, initial 14 day lock is expiring and they're able to take their money out of the contract. Now, the reason that these two aren't exactly close up to that point is that 10% contract um, withdrawal, the contract fee. So every deposit on the contract, they take a 10% fee and that's why the contract balance is not as high as the cumulative balance. You can see it's off by about 10% and that's the reason for that. So let's keep going down these minimum lock period 14 the total withdrawal return is 142.1%. You can see that is that 157.9 minus the uh, the uh, tax reduction. So I've classified that as a tax reduction um, because it's not, uh, this is quite a complex calculation when you get into it, but just to explain simply, you're reducing the overall rate of return by this tax. That's all that's happening. You're not creating a tax, you're not creating a reinvestment. No, a reinvestment on some other contracts means that you're earning interest on that reinvestment. You're not. You're just effectively putting it back onto the contract, which lowers the contract, which lowers your effective with rate of return, your, your withdrawal return by that amount, 142.11. And that is consistent with what is on the website. 
142.11. So you can see where that figure is coming from. Um, your reinvest rate, for some contracts they have a reinvest rate and that's different from that tax reduction because you that goes onto your balance and you get an increased return on that. That is not applicable to Multimatic. They don't have that reinvest rate. Um, there is a reinvest on the site here. You can see auto reinvested 14 times. That's included in this total return. So I'm not counting that as a separate reinvest for the purposes of this, of this contract. So referral adjustment uh, is a an interest rate that I have in here and I've got it set to zero at the moment. You know, I can put a, a, an arbitrary figure in here and basically the reason I've got this in here is is that the, it's impossible for me to work out what um, how much is being paid out of the contract balance by referrals. I don't think personally that referrals are that huge. I could be wrong about that. Um, so, you know, you look at Multimatic and what they pay out for referrals. Is it on even on this page? Yeah, so 5% for each level one, 2.5. I would I would assume the number of people actually getting referrals is pretty low. Um, you know, if, if <laughs> by all means, if you want to go into my um, uh, video description, click on one of my referral links and use that, I'd, I'd really love it. I haven't seen anything from that. I don't know how many people are actually getting referrals. I don't think it's like so much that it would skew the, the um, figures, but I've got some amount in there and maybe if you want to put like a 0.5% that might even, I don't know, it doesn't do anything but anyway that's that's probably neither here nor there. Now withdrawal tax, this is separate to what I've called the tax reduction of 10%. Withdrawal tax is what um, some contracts have as basically they you tax the withdrawal and that is the amount that goes into um, the devs account balance essentially. It comes off the contract, it pays the devs for Multimatic, we don't have that withdrawal tax. What we have is actually the contract tax, which is a deposit tax. Um, so I might just call that actually a deposit tax because just to make it clear what we're talking about, 10% comes off the deposit. The They don't actually take um, that. And, and for even more clarity, I'm going to call that a fee. A, withdrawal, a withdrawal fee and a deposit fee. So the withdrawal fee, when it's in place, like if the devs take 10% off your withdrawal, it doesn't really come off the smart contract, it comes out of your total return. So that calculation is in there when you're looking at, at whether or not this is a good investment. So total new investments is um, yellow here because it's something that you can, uh, that, that, that I put in there to tweak in the model. Basically, look, I'm, I'm showing here what the average daily investments is, it has been historically uh, out of these figures. Uh, so that's the average daily investment uh, over time. But we're not really using that as, as a prediction of, of future because you can see this curve up here, the blue line and the total new investments over time has really dropped down. It's actually below 10,000. I've got 10,000 in there. It's probably a best case scenario to be honest. Um, but that's, you know, if, if for some reason you got say 500,000 in there, this looks very different and it's a much more sustainable app. So this is really like where the guesswork comes in. H how much do you think... Um, how, how many new investments do you think are going to come onto this? I don't think it's going to be much more than 10,000. I think 10,000 is probably a good guide uh, just based on where we have been and we've dropped right down to 6,000, 8,000. It's kind of a trickle at this point and that's that's the, the reason for this sharp drop. Uh, if you were optimistic and you said 100,000, sorry, 100,000, let's put another zero on that, um, then you're going to get more time out of this contract. You know, you know projected date, end date, goes to April 3rd here, which is great. I just don't think you're going to get it. I don't think you're going to get 10 more than say, you know, what if, what if it was 20,000? Is it going to survive? No. What if it was 50,000? Is it going to survive? No, it's, it's the same. You need, you need a huge influx of, um, of new investments at this stage to sustain it just because, and think about the reason for this. It's because this huge number of investments have come in early and they need to get paid. And they're going to get paid out of the contract balance. The contract balance is just going to drop to zero. So that's that's how that's how this model um, is is projecting things. So um, what I've got, what this is calculating here, cumulative investment. Oh, sorry, I missed one. Base investment. I just leave that as a hundred for the purposes of calculating a um, a return on investment here, uh, somewhere here. It basically keeps the things simple. I'm just saying, if I were to invest a hundred dollars, this tries to calculate how much I'm getting. Uh, in return. Um, 
you can make it $20, but $100 is easy because it's an easy number to, to work with. So cumulative investment, what this is showing is basically where this graph is um, of new investments is, is taking our cumulative investment total. So this is as of right um, now based on this snapshot, so sometime kind of today, I'm estimating 1.6 million have, has been invested into um, Polystake. Sorry, what are we talking about? Multimatic in total. Uh, if I look at the Multimatic page, they're saying it's 1.65. Okay, so we're close. It's it's a it's a model. It's not exactly right. Um, 1.65. I've got 1.71. Like it's 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 about as close as you're gonna get. Um, and this comes from actual figures. Plus for for today, you know, we've got some. Uh, some rough figures. In fact, you know, you could take 10,000 off that uh, for today because it's not reflected yet in on the website and you pretty much it pretty much nails it. So that's that's an indication to me that, that the model is at least accurate in picking up the total amount invested. Contract balance. This is the contract balance that I'm predicting today in the model. So 1.147. In actual fact, that daily balance is 1146. So look, we're roughly in the ballpark. Um, you know, the, the, there could be uh, an adjustment that needs to happen here because my interest rate is not 100% uh, correct because I haven't accounted for referrals. Um, so maybe I want to put like a 0.5 referral. I'm actually not sure that yeah, it doesn't really change it that much, but but that, um, you know, why don't we put a 1% withdrawal referral fee in there, uh, sorry, referral percentage, and we can see just sort of slight ref reflection here on the contract balance. It's not much. Um, days operational. This is the day since the first date till today. So it's been operational to, for 14 days and that's pretty important for, for Multimatic because it has a 14 day uh, withdrawal um, lock-in. So you can see as of today, 13th of March, this is the point at which we start seeing a drop. Like, um, And people are talking about the sustainability of Multimatic. They're like, hey, the contract balance is high. Of course it's high. People have not been able to get their, their withdrawals out. So you can see the daily balance is still going up very slightly. This was the balance as, as of an hour and a half ago. This is the balance as of today, as of right now, I should say. Balance is still slightly going up. But what are we about to see? We're about to see the, the investments of the last 14 days start coming out. And we're going to see this line drop. That's, that's my prediction. That's my opinion. Um, and that's, you know, if you, that's the problem with just going onto the, onto the website and going, Hey, the contract balance is 1.3 total staked is 1.6. This thing's been running for 14 days. It's really sustainable. But when you look at why that is, it's because you haven't taken any withdrawals. All that you've taken out is the 10% tax and then down goes the contract balance. And because new investments are so low, it's unsustainable in my opinion. Um, average daily investments we've looked at. Contract health, this is this is just this is much less applicable to lock in contracts than, than it is for ones where you can get a daily withdrawal. Just shows how much of the uh, of the total invest invested the contract um, is able to repay. So it's just a kind of indicator of health. Over the next coming days, based on this model, we're gonna see this really sharply decline. So um, you know, it's just under 90%, which which means essentially that our 10% um, uh, that that's the ten percent in in gap here based on the on the deposit fee, uh, minus a little bit of expected payments, and those are the very first investments that that have been coming out at the start of the contract. That's why it's slightly below nine ninety percent because we're at the point that the first contracts are going to um, come good, and basically people are going to take their money out. So my projected end date is March eighteenth, based on this model. Uh, that is five days from now, um, and I'm not going to claim that it's going to happen on the on the nose. In fact, I would almost um, I'd be very confident to say it's definitely going to happen after March 18th. And the reason is the variables here. Well, the variables variable one is new investments. If they drop down to zero, the model says still March 18th. So not much of a difference. Um, you know that's because new investments at that low rate aren't going to make much of an impact into the amount of debt the the contract has already. So um, March 18th, new investments not really going to matter unless they're really high. If it's say 100,000, then we're going to take it out to April. But, you know, I don't think we're going to get that um, 
that level of, of investment. Uh, the other variable here that's not uh, taken into account in Multimatic is how many people have gone into these 21 days and 28 day contracts. Um, I'm assuming that almost none have. Maybe we find that, look, 60%, 80% have gone into Moon Boy or Dolphin Club, which in my you know, uh, estimation seems pretty un unlikely. But if that does, um, if that is the case, then we could see an extra seven days on this. I may even get some money out of this. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, you know, I I think that that's the variable that we just we just don't know. Or, or if if someone has a way of finding that out from the uh, from the data on chain, maybe that share that with me. I haven't. Uh, to be fair, I haven't looked into it in that detail. I can't see anything in the in the in the data that's going to really give me a good indication of that, or or that's easy to get out without kind of hours of of tweaking spreadsheets. Um. So where was I? So that, that's variable number two. Variable number three is the snooze function and if people use that snooze function. So if we people use the snooze function, these early investors, if most of them hit snooze, then we're going to see, yes, we're going to see this contract green line extend out perhaps significantly depending on how many people use it. Um, do I think that is going to make a difference? Well, it's not going to make a difference to my assessment of risk as I've, as I've said because... What matters is the contract's ability to pay off investors. So if I was one of these investors who got in early and now I'm at this stage where I'm ready to collect money, if I hit snooze for a day looking at this, I, I know I'm at risk uh, of losing my money, everything. I'm at risk of losing my investment. That's because people who got in three days later uh, are now going to have the opportunity to take their money out. So if I'm, if I'm an investor who got in on the 20th of March, say, sorry, 14 days earlier, so on the 4th of March, under this model, my investment is going to come good on the 20th of March, but I'm not going to be able to get it because everyone's taken it out. So, but we extend this green line because people are, sn are snoozing. Now I can get my investment out. And that is a risk to people who could get their investment out on this day and have chosen not to. So that's why I think the snooze feature is not going to really make much of a difference. You know, in May, people may decide to use it. I just don't want to put it in my model because when I'm calculating if there's a risk of me getting in today, I'm not going to, I'm going to calculate based on the ability of the contract balance to pay me, not on the kind of, you know, the the goodwill of, of people hitting that snooze button uh, for my personal gain. I just don't see that happening. So it's not in the model. Um, all right, so projected end date is 18th of March. As I said, you can add up to a week probably on that. Um, and really what would drive that is a lot of people having gone on to um, the Moon Boy or the Dolphin Club. Um, that, that, that is one thing that would extend this contract out a little bit. I just don't think it, it's... I don't think realistically a lot of people are going to do that. And um, just given the nature of this, you can see this the way that the kind of the bulk of this initial investment comes due at this time, it would be really difficult to, to, to I find it very unlikely that that's going to change too much. Um, so my personal prediction, March 18th, maybe March 20th to the 21st, I, I'd be surprised if it lasts longer than that based on these new investment numbers. So my, my expected return, if I were to invest today, is zero. And that would be because, well, you can see this cumulative return um, go up. This is this is how much I, I'd make, but ba basically by the end date, it's um it, it's going to be zero. Uh, in fact, look, I, I've I haven't tweaked this from the previous model, so these numbers are incorrect. I'll have a look at that, but but the bottom line is, fourteen days will not have elapsed um, since the time I I invested uh, today to the time I'm time to uh, I'd be able to collect in fourteen days time. So my return rate is zero. Okay. So I hope that kind of explains these calculations. I'll, I'll just show you a little bit more of the table down here just for completeness so you understand. So these daily new investments I've got here starting with the initial contract date on the 27th of Feb. You can see them. These are actual uh, amounts every day. And from today, the 13th of March onwards, it's just, for, it's just assumed 10,000 as a basis of calculation. You can see this cumulative investment is basically um, the new investments today plus the investments yesterday 
plus daily reinvested, which under this contract is zero. So this just keeps track of, of all of the new investments that go in. Um, now this is where I've tweaked the contract from previous ones, uh, the, the, the model from previous contracts is the locked withdrawals. So um, previously this was a daily withdrawal, but now we've got locked withdrawals. So what this locked withdrawal calculates is, well, for the total number of new investments today, I know I'm going to have to pay them um, this the, their return rate of 142.1% back on their locked investment. So I, for this 18,806, um, I'm going to have to pay back, you know, the contract's going to have to pay back 26,000 in 14 days time. So you can see that this unlocked withdrawals calculates, uses that 14 day minimum lock and that 26,000 is going to have to be paid um, in 14 days time. So that's how that's calculated. Um, and then the contract balance is essentially the initial investment minus that fee of 10%, uh, sorry, minus the, the deposit fee of 10%. Um, and that takes the contract balance down to 16,000. And that contract balance every day will go up by the amount invested uh, less that 10% fee and then minus however much is paying in unlocked withdrawals. So you can see that continuing to rise because there are no unlocked withdrawals. And as soon as those withdrawals get unlocked, uh, the amount of balance goes down by the amount that they unlocked. So because we had such a huge investment in the first few days, in the first week, massive investments in the next week, dwindling down to nothing, those investments are going to need to be paid back um, and basically you can see the contract balance once they start to be paid back. We've got one, two, three, four, five days of them being paid back and the contract balance sharply dropping up over the next five days. So um, look, I think I think that about covers it, right? That, that's It's been a very long video showing over an hour. So hopefully this is useful to someone. I know some of you, I know this is a lot of information, but we'll see if this prediction holds true, if this model holds true. I've I've gone through this a few times in my um, my head, and to me, this seems completely reasonable. Like this, the way this curve plays out over the next couple of days is reflected in the actual contract balance at the moment. This is what we're seeing on the contract matches up to this curve. Uh, I don't think that we're going to see anything other then in the next five days, a sharp drop off of this contract balance to zero. Um, that's my prediction. As I said, it could last till the 20th of um, March, perhaps maybe the 21st of March, depending on how many people have invested in um, in Moonboy and Dolphin Club and depending on how many people use that snooze function. But I just don't see it. I don't see it lasting uh, longer than say 20th, 21st of March. And if it does last, the critical thing is if it does last longer than that, it's um, it's it's essentially creating more suckers. <laughs> and there's no other way to put it. It's because people are using that snooze, snooze function and um, they're going to lose out. People who use the snooze function are going to lose out in the long term when that contract balance starts dropping. But um, let's see what happens. Let's see how this plays out in the real world uh, over the next five days. Will it go down to zero? Um, or will all of these hopes and dreams and promises that people are talking about um, basically bear fruit? So thanks for watching. Sorry about the really long video. Hopefully this is uh, been informative. Uh, from now, I'm probably going to stop talking about Multimatic for a bit, maybe check in in a couple of days to see how we're going. I want to spend my time looking at some of the newer uh, ROI apps that have come out and try to apply these similar models to the newer ROI apps and um, put the information out there and hopefully that helps people in their investment decisions. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Please do your own research. Please understand what you're getting into. Please understand how these contracts work and, um, and make your own financial decisions. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.